We need to be showing the American people that Donald Trump is uh, dangerous to be in office again. We need to keep the focus on that, on uh, the things that he says he's going to do in a second term that are dangerous and how he would not uphold our Constitution and how he wants to exact revenge on his political enemies, because that is not an inspiring message to me. It's only about Donald Trump and um, what's good for him. Hi again, everyone. It's 5 o'clock in New York. When the history of our turbulent current times that the ones we're living through are written, it will be noted that the loudest warnings about the danger to our nation and our democracy, if the disgraced, twice impeached, four times indicted ex-president should be elected to a second term, the most urgent warnings, by and large, with a few exceptions, came from women and young women in most instances. Women who worked in the Trump administration, like Cassidy Hutchinson, Sarah Matthews, who you saw there, Alyssa Farah Griffin, and women from other branches of government, people like Liz Cheney. Liz Cheney has made it her life's work to see Donald Trump held accountable politically and legally. The women speaking clearly, without flinching, often at great personal risk to their safety, to their careers. Liz Cheney isn't in Congress anymore. In order to, in their view, in their telling, warn people and put their fellow citizens on notice about what they witnessed the first time Trump was president, and to warn us about what could be in store next time. What would it mean, in your mind, if Donald Trump became president again? What would a second Trump term look like? Fundamentally, a second Trump term could mean the end of American democracy as we know it. And I, I don't say that lightly. The fact that he feels that he needs to lean into being a dictator alone shows that he is a weak and feeble man yeah. who has no sense of character and integrity and has no sense of leadership. He knows how to use government better this time. He can put in diehard loyalists who can weaponize every level of government against his detractors, against the American people, against the media. It's, it's almost too scary to fully wrap your head around what it could look like. It's almost too scary to wrap your head around. And with women leading the way and with the stakes so high, the chorus now, the veritable chorus of former Trump officials putting the nation on blast about the dangers of a potential second Trump term has grown to include chiefs of staff, national security advisors, even Trump's own vice president, Mike Pence. And as we have said on this program before, all the calls now coming from inside the House, including from Trump's former national security advisor, Ambassador John Bolton. He offered his own chilling prediction of what a second Trump term would mean for America in his best-selling book, The Room Where It Happened. In a new foreword, Bolton writes this, quote, facts are blunt instruments, and a mountain of facts demonstrate that Trump is unfit to be president. Bolton predicts a second Trump term would be a, quote, retribution presidency, in which Trump will install White House staffers who will follow his orders without asking troubling questions, staffers who will not be known for independent creative thinking, just personal fidelity to Trump. And if that's not enough to keep you up at night, Bolton warns this, quote, vast portions of the national security machinery will simply grind to a halt in a second Trump term. We are in, in entirely uncharted territory. He ends with this, quote, if Trump's first four years were bad, a second four years will be worse. It is this kind of forceful, unequivocal rebuke of Donald Trump that is urgently needed right now. It's something we are still waiting to hear from many other members of Trump's cabinet and inner circle. And it goes straight to the heart of the conversation we've been having on this show as part of our series, American Autocracy. It could happen here, where we examine how Donald Trump could cause our democracy to backslide into something more closely resembling autocracy. Something Ambassador Bolton addressed recently with a little gallows humor, asked whether Trump really has the, quote, appetite to be a dictator. Bolton said this, quote, Trump doesn't have the brains. He's a real estate developer, for God's sake. It's where we start the hour with former Trump White House National Security Advisor Ambassador John Bolton. Thank you for being here. Glad to be here. So the warnings are urgent and they are dire. Tell me if you have personal concerns. I mean, Bill Barr took a very aggressive posture with trying to halt the publication of your book. Sure. I, I take Trump at his word that he's going to run a retribution presidency. I think uh, it's always all about him and the stolen, quote, unquote, 2020 election is something he's not going to let go or anybody else that he think has crossed him from the beginning of his political career right up until the present. So it's a long list and it may take him a while, but it will it will demonstrate, I think, how he throws the government into chaos when he tries to use the Justice Department or possibly the, the Defense Department to to carry out this retribution. 
You know, he wanted to have the Taliban at Camp David. Um, I know you disagreed with his foreign policy impulses and instincts, as did General Kelly, who I think was it's come out concerned about Trump starting a war with North Korea. Just detail the national security risk that was and what it would be if he were back there without people like you or General Kelly. Well, I think it's important to understand, and I think this is especially important for Trump critics to understand. He doesn't have a philosophy. Uh, he doesn't think in policy terms as that's conventionally understood in Washington. Uh, he thinks in anecdotal, ad hoc, transactional terms, uh, seen through the prism of how does this benefit Donald Trump. So trying to get from A to B with Trump is no, no easy task. And since it's constantly refiltered through the notion of where he will benefit from it, it's very hard to know where he will go. He has simple-minded ideas about how the world works. He thinks, for example, he said it quite explicitly, if he has good relations with the head of a foreign state, if he has good relations with Vladimir Putin, then the United States has good relations with that nation. That's nonsense. Personal relations have their place in foreign affairs as in everything else. But the hard men of countries like China and Russia know what their national interests are, and they pursue them. Donald Trump doesn't have a clue. What is the specific danger of just first thing Donald Trump wants to do is leave NATO. He wanted to do it his first term. People like yourself and H.R. McMaster got him not to. But if people like that aren't there, what does it look like if America withdraws from NATO? It would be a catastrophic mistake for the United States. It wouldn't mean simply the end of NATO, although that would be the inevitable consequence. Uh, it would cause our allies around the world to doubt uh, our commitment to them in Japan, South Korea, Australia, any country that uh, relies on the United States for mutual security. Uh, Trump doesn't get that because he doesn't fundamentally understand alliances. He thinks we're defending the Europeans and they won't pay us. He doesn't understand that mutual security means everybody is more secure and that there's strength in alliances. Alliances can be a pain in the neck to manage, but if they serve the national interest, as ours do, NATO in particular, uh, to get out of it, it will, will cause negative consequences for the United States you can't even imagine. And you, you wrote in your book, um, which has been out now for a while, that you were concerned that, that our U.S. foreign policy had been corrupted as it pertained not just to Russia, but Turkey as well. Did you get to the bottom of whether there was a financial interest in Trump's decisions when it came to Turkey? No, and it was never pursued. I, I told the uh, uh, authorities within the uh, Trump administration at the Justice Department and the White House Counsel's Office that I was worried about what Trump had said to uh, Turkish President Erdogan and, and a number of other things he had done. Uh, and I was often accused of doing everybody else's job in the White House. So at that point, I, I made the referral in effect, and uh, I'm not sure anything came of it. So you believe his, his policies, just what he said out loud, let alone what he does if, he, if he's there again, are catastrophic, that his foreign policy that he carried out while you were there was corrupt. What is your plan for making sure he's never president? Well, I think it's important for people to understand that uh, they are rolling the dice on a second Trump term. There are many people, including particularly Republicans, who will support him, who think that what he did in the first term is a sure guide to how he'll behave in the second term. I think that's nonsense, because the second term, very diff different political environment, and therefore a different personal calculus for Donald Trump. So let's just take a couple of examples, like abortion. Uh, he, was, he was for appointing justices to reverse Roe v. Wade, which I think was the right thing to do because it was an incorrect constitutional decision. But when you come down now to the hard specifics of what does he personally feel the policy on abortion should be, uh, just in the past few days, uh, it's been, what, what does he think in the morning? What does he think in the afternoon? He doesn't care about the subject of abortion. He cares about Donald Trump. And, and that's something that uh, you see over and over again in, in his behavior. I mean, 81 percent of Americans disagree with you and your position on Roe. Well, the Constitution isn't up for a vote. Uh, there is no, uh, n n there's simply nothing in the Constitution that addresses the question of abortion one way or another, which means that 
it was open for the political process. And, and when the court decided Roe, it took the issue out of the political process. Uh, that turned out to be a big mistake, and we're still fighting the animosities today in very emotional terms. If in 1973 the court had ruled there was no uh, uh, meaning in the Constitution that affected the question of abortion, we'd have fought it out politically back then, and it would probably be settled by now. Well, we didn't have you here to debate uh, abortion policy. We can do that another day. I, I want to understand, I mean, Sarah Longwell is running a campaign of Republicans against Donald Trump. And she said that she is, quote, obsessed with permission structures. And I wonder what role you're willing to play in terms of leading Republicans away from voting for Trump again for something you describe as catastrophic and corrupt and dangerous. Right. Well, my view is that neither Biden nor Trump are fit to be president. Well, is, is Joe Biden corrupt and catastrophic for U.S. world foreign policy? No, but he's not on duty 24-7. And that's a potential... Well, what's worse, someone who, in your view, isn't on duty or someone who's catastrophic and corrupt? If neither one passes the bar to be fit, uh, there's no comparison. Neither one of them should be president. Who are president. you going to vote for? I'm going to write in somebody like I did in 2020. You know, you're not alarmed enough. I mean, Donald Trump hasn't ruled out pursuing you. All the things you say, if we're to believe them at good faith, why wouldn't you vote against him? Well, I am going to vote against him. I'm going to vote for somebody other than Donald Trump. In, in arms control parlance, we call this a, a problem of incommensurables. You can't measure Biden and Trump along the same metric. Uh, but they both. But that's what voters are going to be asked to do. Why don't you do what, what voters are well, going to be asked I, to do? Well, I, I am. I'm measuring them both unfit, and that's why I'm going to vote for somebody else. I'm going to be very unhappy whichever one is elected. You have relationships all around the country. I mean, Fiona Hill was just here. I know you work closely with her. People around the world don't view both as an equal threat to democracy and the world order. Well, I, I view both as incompetent to handle the job. Uh, and it's not what even What has Biden sure. done on foreign policy that's incompetent to handle the job? Well, I think he's completely misjudged China. He's got the Middle East uh, in, in chaos for not supporting Israel, our ally. He has mishandled the he Russian... He went there. Do you think Trump would have gone to Israel after 10-7? Uh, it depends on whether Trump saw it in his interest to go. Biden's mishandled Ukraine. We're in a, a stalemate now but after Trump two months of war. Trump would give it back. Uh, what what Trump would do on any given issue at any given point, I think, is almost impossible to predict. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.